Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, Jordan here, Pound for Pound Podcast, and we have a special guest tonight. Steven Wonderboy Thompson is joining us. How you doing, man? Doing good, man. Glad to be on with you guys. Oh, it's good to, good to have you here uh, back again, actually. You were on with us before, and then you went on a, uh, a massive uh, winning streak, so I don't like to take uh, credit for that, Steven, but, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> That's right. It is what it is. It is what it is, oh, man. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so obviously you've got a million questions for you. Uh, you're kind of in the spotlight now due to, uh, first of all, I know you you were on, you did a great job, by the way, uh, as, a, as an analyst on, on Fox Sports 1, so congratulations on that. Oh, well, thank you very much. Yeah, that was my actually my second time doing it. Yeah. Uh, the first one was with uh, Cormier and, uh, you know, Kenny Florian was with the Stipe and, and Verdum fight. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, this is my second one. Obviously, they wanted me there to see who won the fight against Tyron and, and Robbie Lawler. So it was fun, man. And Cormier and those guys and Dominic and, um, you know, they just make it easy for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it's their like pros. You fit in pretty well with them, too. Was it easier the second time? It was, and but at the same time, I was still fairly nervous just because uh, I knew I wanted to uh, call out the winner, but mm-hmm. I wasn't really sure how I was going to do it. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So I was like, oh man, like the you know, I was like getting more nervous and more nervous as the time went on because it was getting closer to that time, <laughs> and I uh, wasn't really sure who was going to win. And but you know what? It was fun, man. Yeah, it seemed it, so. Like I mean. Personally, I'm not a very confrontational guy, like so. I would, I would be really nervous about that. Like, how am I going to say this without coming off like a jerk? Exactly. I'm not very confront. I'm not a confrontational guy at all. I hate it actually. Yeah, me too. But you know, you got Cormier and Dominic Cruz in your ear, like you know, you, you got to call this guy out, man. This is your <laughs> belt. You got to do it, man. I'm like, just, just leave me alone. Let, let me figure it out, you know. And then and I ended up saying it, and you know, I sound like a goober, you know, calling him out because I'm not that. I'm not a mean guy. Right. So I was just, hey, man, you know, what do you think about me and you fighting the Madison Square Garden? He's, and then he comes out with like, nah, man. No, uh, I want a money fight. I'm like, in my head, I'm laughing. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, you literally have had the belt around your waist for probably 30 minutes, and you're telling the number <laughs> one contender, no, you want a money fight? I mean, if it was your fourth fight, or maybe you defended yeah. it a few times, maybe, right? But not now. And then it, it was like, upset me, you know? And Cormier is like looking at me. He's like, dude, you got you to call him out again. You got to bring it back. I'll feed it back to you. I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. So then, you know, it gets back on Cormier and he's, you know, making sparks fly and oh my goodness, it was fun though. Yeah, you know, I thought you handled it pretty well too because I, my jaw hit the floor when he said that. Like, because I was, I was expecting, you know, kind of the stock response, you know, like, okay, yeah, well, let's just, let's set the time and date and we'll do it. But like, he, yeah, he came back with like the, the WWF heel response. So I, I was yeah. kind of shocked. Man, me too, man. I was like laughing in my head. It's like, really? You're not going to give the guy – I believe that I earned it more than anybody in the division mm-hmm. and just look at me and say no, especially all the stuff that you went through before your last fight. You were you were number fourth ranked guy in the division. You know, you waited 18 months. Uh, oh, man, you know, I deserve it. I deserve it. I deserve it. But there's nobody in the division more – I believe more deserving than, than me, myself. Sure. You know, I think I did, um, you know, what the fans wanted and what the UFC wanted to get there and – and him just tell me no, you know, I'm like, and some people say he, you know, he didn't deserve it, that, that shot, but you know, they gave it to him anyway. Mm-hmm. And Robbie gave it to him. I mean, so I don't know, man, it, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it is pretty crazy. So a, a hypothetical question, put yourself in his shoes. You just won the belt. You got the number one contender on the other line. D- do you, do you make that call too? Or do you go more with the, do you just go with the stock answer? You know, when he calls you out or do you, do you try to do the big money fight? Cause to me, it kind of seems like that's kind of the in thing at the moment. Everyone's calling for these money fights. It's kind of like money Connor, Ma- Connor McGregor syndrome. Like everyone's calling for money fights now, but like, uh, I-, I guess what would you do if you were in that situation and you had Tyron Woodley sitting on the other end saying, how about Madison square garden? What would your response have been? Man, you know, I'm in this business to, to, to be the best fighter right you know the the money is a bonus thing for me um whoever if i was in a situation whoever was up next the number one contender the, the guy most of reserving in the division i'm here to face the best guys yeah. you know and after i believe to myself and I, my dad can, can vouch for me because you know you know i'm, I'm, a, I'm a straight up guy and, and i want to do things the right way yeah and that's just the right way you give the num- i mean you're the champion there's a number one guy there for a reason that's the guy that you face. Right. You know, you defend that a few times, and then we can talk about maybe doing a money fight. But you got to earn that, I believe. 
I agree with that. Do you think that uh, that kind of sense of uh, honor almost and in, uh, in t- doing the right thing, does that come from your upbringing? I, I believe so. You know, with the karate background, just, mm-hmm. just uh, you know, that's how I was taught, man. And when you're fighting the martial arts or competing or, or it, it, you know, maybe you're just training, it's a lifestyle. And, you know, fighting honorably yeah. and doing the right thing is just, that's that's what it's all about. That's what the martial arts is all about. I agree, man. And that's actually something that like, I really admire about the sport. And so like when I see things like that, it actually, um, that, you know, that's the stuff that excites me more than the, you know, the money fights, but you know, I get the UFC is a business, but, um, <clears throat> you know, I guess we'll, we'll see what happens. So in, in the meantime, and I'm sure you've been asked this a million times by now, but like, um, uh, l- let's say again, hypothetically, if they do decide to pass you up for this title shot, are you going to wait around for it? Or are you going to fight again? Well, that's the thing. Like, who else do I fight? Right. Yeah. I mean, I I, I fought the number one, num, number two guy, mm-hmm. beat him. I fought the number one guy, and I beat him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You got Carlos Condit, and you got Damian Maya fighting, who is like right, uh, you know, number three and four. I mean, I'm not gonna fight number six. I'm not gonna fight number seven right. guy. I mean, uh, of course, anybody in the division is very good. I mean, would you take that chance? Right. But man, I mean, if you know, if it doesn't, if let's say hypothetically, they, I don't, they don't get, but. I think it's going to happen. But let's say they don't get it. Well, then, you know what? If the UFC is going to do that to me, man, get, get me a money fight then. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I you agree know? with you. Yeah, 100%, man. Like, I get where you're coming from. And I, I agree with you. I think they are going to give it to you. Like, it just seems ludicrous that they that they wouldn't, you know. But, um, but it, you know, stranger things have happened, I guess, and you you got to be open to whatever. But um, I agree with exactly. you. I, I've just, I've seen a lot of people, you know, asking that that question, saying, well, if, if they do, say George St. Pierre comes back and he... He he gets uh, gets plugged in there and he fights Tyron. You know, well, who who would Stephen fight? And I think your answer was great. I I have no idea what the, I mean, in, unless you're fighting Carlos or Damian, but that that also seems a little silly. It seems like an uh, an unnecessary number one contender fight that you already won. It, it, you know what? You could I couldn't say it better myself. You're exactly right, and that's how I feel. Like there, you know, at first there was so many things up in the air and I, I wasn't really sure what was going to happen. I was kind of confused of what was going on because mm-hmm. that's how I thought it worked. You know, if you're the right. champion, you fight the number one guy, but then he's like, no, I want to money fight. I want to fight this guy who's been out for a year and a half or a guy that's been out for three years. You know, wait a second, this just doesn't sound right. right. But the more and more as the, as the days go on, it just seems silly mm-hmm. for that to happen. You right. know? So, I mean, I, in my head, I'm preparing for a tyrant for, for a Madison square garden. I don't care what anybody, I don't care what he says. He's putting these videos out of me saying, oh, I would rather fight Robbie. Right. I would. I think it would be a better fight. Sure. You know, I would say I'd rather. And plus, I thought he was going to win. I thought he was going to have the title. I mean, it didn't say I'll, I, I, I wouldn't fight Tyron. Exactly. Of course I would fight Tyron. But, uh, you know, he's making these excuses. And, man, I, I don't know what where he, where he's at, man. I mean, I don't know. He's not, a, he's not a guy who's scared. But it's getting to the point where, man, is this guy really running? You know, is, is he looking for a fight, a fight that he knows he can win just to call himself a legitimate champion because he's defended it one time? I, I don't know. So, right. Um, do, do you think that it might be kind of a defensive, uh, almost like he's being defensive about it, like he's saying that he'd rather fight, uh, you know, uh, Nick Diaz and he'd rather fight George St. Pierre than do you think that's because you're the toughest fight for him? Uh, you know what? I, that's what it looks like. What do you think? <laughs> I, I I think that's so. I'm not trying like. to put words in your mouth or anything, but yeah, yeah. that's that's yeah. how that's how I see it. Yeah, that's how I'm reading it. Me, you know, it's getting you know, like I said, the more the days go on and the stuff I see on social media, the videos that he's putting out, that's what it seems like. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you've seen any of his videos on mm-hmm. his Instagram uh, or not, but that's exactly what it seems like. Yeah, so. I, yeah, I did. I watched one today, and you're you're. I think you're right. <laughs> yeah. 